So in today's episode, I'm going to be talking about TAPEX. So I'm just going to cover the very fundamental elements of a TAPEX, and I'm not going to go to too much in depth of each section, but I'm just going to cover the overall general concept of what is a TAPEX and what is included in the TAPEX and why is it important. So right now I am in the Midtown factory of POD Group and um, today's Sunday so no one's here so I can have some uh, quiet and peace to record this lesson or record this this vlog. So POD Group has more than 25 years of experience in the apparel industry manufacturing for multiple high-end brands and also as well as contemporary bridge market. We do a wide variety of garment categories from dresses, activewear, streetwear, uniform, jackets, trousers, um, you know, blouses, top and bottoms, um, outerwear, bridal, kidswear, pretty much everything associated with apparel and soft accessories we are able to manufacture here. Uh, we have three factories, one here in Midtown Manhattan and one in overseas China with our Shanghai office managing all the supply chain and all the process. And we are adding another Vietnam factory as well to our supply chain to better manage and better accommodate different needs um, when it comes to cut and sew, mass market, and active wear. So the basic tap pack comes in five fundamental sections. The first one is called the cover page or the cap page, which is used to show the digital technical illustration of your design for both front and back. So anyone who sees the tap pack the first time can have the basic knowledge of what your design is about. And the first page is extremely crucial because it gives the factory or whoever is handling your sampling or development a visual idea of what your design is. It is very important to have strong and technical visual to communicate with the factory. And when I mean technical visual, it's more than a sketch. It's more than just a rough draft. It's actual technical drawing, it is very important to have as many details on the CAD as possible. So it is easier to communicate and it's more convenient for the factory to point out if there's any arrows in the drawing, if there's any technical confusions in the drawing, so factories or the pattern maker can point it out immediately once they see the drawing. The second page is called BOM, which stands for Bill of Materials. In this page, every single material used to create this design needs to be listed in detail. From fabric, trim, labels, packaging materials, hangers, and etc. For example, if your design is using rayon blend of 6040 printed fabric, then for the fabric section in cell fabric row, it will tell the factory that the body of the design is using 6040 rayon blend printed fabric, while the lining is 100% poly in solid black. Zipper is 27 inches long placed at the center back, and the shoulder will have two hanger strap in a quarter inch wide tool tape. As for the main labels and care labels, hang tags and poly backpacking, will all need to be listed in full details with size, placement, quantity per garment, and etc. The third section is the most important part, which is called spec sheet or graded spec sheet. During the initial sampling stage, only one size is needed for sampling. So when you're developing a dress, you don't have to worry about all the other sizes. You just have to focus on the middle or the average size which can be a size six or eight if you're doing the numeral size run, or it can be size medium if you're doing the uh, letter size run. So usually for women's wear, we do size six or eight or size M. Depends on the size scale you wanna use. The size range can be extra small to extra large, or it could be double zero to size 14. 
there's no strict size range uh, when it comes to a graded spec or, or spec sheet. But the first stage before we get into the graded spec is to get the fit of one average size correct so it can grade to the other sizes later on during production. So during development and sampling stage, only one size is needed. And for that particular size, all measurements recorded in the page is called the spec sheet. The spec sheet will have a list of POMs, which means point of measurements. Each POM will tell the pattern maker how to create the first draft of pattern based on this reference measuring point. It will also be the check-in point for technical designers to spec the garment once the first sample is complete to make sure that all measurements are in accordance to the spec sheet. The measurements are extremely crucial for pattern makers because without detailed and accurate measurements, pattern makers can only estimate or guess the overall proportion of the design based on sketches or digital drawing, which the final result will not be ideal since designers may have different expectation of how design should look like versus what pattern maker sees. So over here, I have an example of a proto sample our factory did for a client. And this is the first proto sample based on the tap pack we created for her. In order for the pattern maker to create the first pattern to sew the proto sample, we need measurements like the cross shoulder, the neck drop, the lapel, the sleeve length, the chest, the garment length, the hem sweep, and then the cuff height, back yoke height, a cross back measurement, and all the other details. How wide do you want the placket? How narrow do you want the lapel? How many buttons do you want on the cuff? All these design details needs to be documented and recorded in the tap pack. So it is very important that if you want one button instead of two button on the cuff, you need to tell us so we can put in the tap pack. If you want no piping details, then you need to tell us so we can remove from the tap pack. Or if you want to add certain details, or if you want to have a wide center front placket, or if you want a um, if you want a curved ham instead of a straight ham, you need to tell us, the factory and the technical designer, so we can put the tap pack together, or you can put it in your tap pack to make sure that you're able to communicate that idea to the factory. So the fourth section is called construction details. This section can have multiple pages, depends on the design. The purpose of these pages are to illustrate the details of the constructions used to put the design together. So for example, like I mentioned previously for the spec sheet sections, if you want pipings along the center front placket, then that is a construction details. If you want French seam instead of mirror seam, that is a construction details. If you want clean finish hem, it is a construction details. If you want a quarter inch baby hem, that's a construction details. If you want a two inch, uh, a two inch neckline facing with a mirror edge finish, that's a construction details. So any technical things that is used to put your design or to execute your design is considered a construction details. So any sewing technique, any printing technique, any machine technique used to put your garment together is considered a construction details. So basically you can interpret or you can look at it as a way to sew your garment. There are so many ways to finish a seam. There are so many ways to finish a hem. There are so many ways to finish a neckline. The reason why we give suggestion to designers about construction details, one, it has to do with costing, the money, the labor cost. And the second has to do with the lead time, how much time is gonna put into it. If you choose French seam to finish 
on all your seamings instead of just a regular straight stitch with a mirror, then the French seam is going to cost a lot more compared to your mirror edge. But it will have a more high end touch to your garment, to your design. And it really depends on how you want your garment to look and how much you're looking to market your garment. So right now I'm going to give you an example of an important construction detail to put in a tag pack if you want your garment to look in a certain way. So this is a development sample we did for a designer and she show us a photo very similar to how we made this for her, a photo of an elastic waistband that looks like this with a non-functional drawstring. And when a non-functional means this one, this particular drawstring is for decorative purpose. It's not a real functional drawstring, it's a stitch down. So it is a drawstring that's tied in a bow and a stitch down in the middle for decorative purpose. And for this construction details, she showed us a reference photo to put in her tap pack. So when the pattern maker saw the photo, she understood that, okay, she wants elastic hem that is three quarter wide. This is the elastic hem with a three quarter wide elastic in the center. And then a non-functional drawstring bow stitched down in the middle of a placket. So once she put the reference photos in, our pattern maker and sewer understood immediately how she wanted the design to look like. And this is the final result. So as you can see, it is very important to always communicate, whether visually or verbally, how you want your design to look like. So the final section can also have multiple pages, which is called fit notes. So in the fit note section, these pages are used to document the fitting issues or fit changes or any design changes after the first sample is made. It is very important to remember that the fit comment section is only after you made the first sample. So once you finish the first sample, you're going to test it either on a model or a dress form. Usually we highly recommend to test on a life model, a fit model, to make sure that that is your customer's body and that is the fit you wanted to achieve. So once you finish the first sample, you put on the life model, you test out the fit, you test out the construction details, you test out the proportion, and you're gonna make changes. So right now next to me, I have an example of a top uh, we did for a designer as a reference. Um, to show you guys that on the first proto sample, they're gonna be having fit issues. For example, like this is a little bit tight around the waist. It doesn't fall naturally on the hip. And then you have some excessive fabric on the overlay here that needs to be fixed and tucked it in. And then for the bat wing sleeve, this is a little wide and the cuff is a little wide the cuff opening, the elastic is a little wide. So all these construction or all these fit issues or changes are going to be documented after the first sample is finished and then it will be recorded in the fit comments or the fit notes section. So usually this is done with the technical designer or the pattern maker so they can know where their issues are, what the fit issue is. Maybe narrow down the sleeve a little bit, close down the, the sleeve opening a little bit, and the overlap over here is not even, doesn't fall naturally. It doesn't, it doesn't have the fit or proportion correct. Or this opening is a little gaping too much, too much gaping or too much this, it needs to be flattened. And to take down a little or take a few inches. So are these measurement changes, for example, like take two or probably take a half an inch or taking an inch off from the section of the sleeve to narrow it down or take off a half an inch or three quarter from the sleep opening. So all these changes, all these numbers are documented in the fit common notes or fit common sections. It is very important to have visual documentations of fit changes or proportion changes or design changes. So for example, if you want to narrow down the sleeve slightly or if you wanted to enlarge 
if there is a tension of or too much gaping in the back, then it's best to take a close and detailed photograph and then to pin it or to get a measurement for after you pinning to write these numbers down and to get these photograph detailed and to put in the comments and to put in the fit notes so the pattern maker can follow these changes when she revised the pattern and then the sewer can look at these changes and make sure that she follows the new patterns constructions or the new patterns proportion carefully and as per how it was illustrated in a tap pack. Usually the fit comments are written by technical designers which they use the fit comment section to ensure everyone is on the same page and all changes documented accordingly. So the purpose of fit comments is very important to record this entire process during development for all the changes because sometimes you can have the first proto sample that came out and you want to change a long sleeve to a short sleeve or a balloon sleeve or completely changing the neckline. So all these need to be recorded as the changes goes on during the development because eventually the first proto sample might or may not look completely different than your final fit sample. So once it gets to the PP stage, which is called pre-production, the sample needs to be perfect. It needs to have the exact design of how you want it to execute for production and all the correct materials and all the trims, which later on we will talk about each sampling stages in later lessons. But today we're just going to focus on tap pack and understanding what it is. In general, tap pack comes in many different forms and sections based on different apparel categories and functions. And each designer or company has their own way of working from ideas to first samples to production. So the sections that I mentioned are usually the most commonly used in the industry. There are so many details involving tap packs and what I mentioned today is only a very generalized overview of what tap pack is. In a professional setting, a tap pack needs to be prepared by an experienced technical designer so the factory can seamlessly move into pattern and then sewing samples without going back and forth communicating with designers. A professionally done tap pack is very important throughout the development stage. It is the communication tool used to tell the factory what your design is and how to make your design. Without a tap pack, the whole process becomes a guessing game and usually ends up wasting time and money on rounds of bad samples. 